Let's go to Mark chapter 9, verses 43 through 48. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. Some people have been telling me that I should not speak about demons and or hell. So this is pretty much, or as it seems, their demons within them are trying to convince me to not do something important. So let me do it more. Let's do it. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched. So what does maimed mean? Maimed. Let's look it up. wound or injure so that a part of the body is permanently damaged. So if your hand is causing you to sin, this is saying to literally cut it off. I know that some people may say that this is not saying to literally cut off your hand. No, this is saying to cut off your hand. This is why it is saying the word maimed. This is truly saying to cut off your hand. Then having two hands to go into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched. Okay. So it is better if your hand is causing you to sin, get rid of it because it is better for you to do so than for you to not do it and continue on in sin than going to hell afterward. Makes sense. 44. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. So this is saying, and what came to me, is that the worms and the fire are going to be part of your torment. Now, you may think of the worms on this earth. And you may be thinking, how in the world are the worms on this earth going to torment me? <clears throat> Listen, <clears throat> the worms on this earth can die. So this has to be telling you that the worms in hell are much more vicious. And if the worms are going to torment you, that means that they are going to be on you, yes, they are going to bite you and perhaps they are going to eat you as well. So can you imagine something eating you and you are trying to kill it, but it can't die? <laughs> My Lord. So the worms in the fire are constant. They won't die out, never can. 45. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched. So now, this is saying your foot. So if your foot is causing you <clears throat> is causing you to sin, 
This is saying to cut it off. It is better for you to cut off your foot than for you to not do it and continue to sin and be thrown into hell. Listen, this is not a game here. You may think who is ever going to cut off their hand or cut off their foot? Well, obviously, we have to know that many people are going to hell. Many are going to hell. So, I received this comment and this young girl was saying, everyone lies or everyone does this, everyone does that. And I am thinking, okay, if many people are doing what is wrong, why are you going to follow them and be sent to hell after death for those sins? It would be much more wise to change your ways and go to heaven after death. Just because many people are doing wrong does not mean that you should do the same things as well. That is foolish. If you don't like God's rules, why tell me about it? <laughs> what can I do about it? <laughs> I can't do anything about it but teach it. Okay. So, and if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life. What does halt mean? I believe halt is lame. So what does lame mean? Let me look it up. Lame. You are lame. <laughs> okay. Unable to walk normally because of an injury or illness affecting the leg or foot. So you are not able to walk or move around as well as you like. So, this is saying it is better to be that way than for you to be not lame or whole and continue on sinning than being sent to hell for disobeying God's rules. Okay. <clears throat> then having two feet to be cast into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched. So, if you see at the end of 43, at the end of 45, it is saying the same things. And in verse 44 and verse 46, it is saying the same things. So obviously, this fire is no joke. Let me say this. Maybe two years ago, and I would pray about, back then I would not pray as much as I am praying now, but back then I prayed for about an hour every day. I think around that time period, me and my niece would pray together every day for an hour, mostly every day, for like a year, I believe. I believe a year, maybe with her, maybe a year or six months, I forget. Anyways, I was having this night vision and you may know them as dreams. Now, in this dream, in this vision, night vision, or supernatural experience, there were two of me. There was a me in the dream, 
and there was a me that was watching on the outside, if that makes any sense to you. So the me that was in the dream, I was being pulled in by this enormous demon. This demon was so huge where I could only see like from the top of his horns to his midsection. I could not even see his arms. Maybe, I don't know, around here, I believe. I don't know. But from here to his midsection, enormous. <laughs> and I was being pulled in. And this demon was so mad at me. And I am thinking, what did I do to you? This demon was so angry with me as if I took its wife or something like that. Crazy. Anyways, I was being dragged in. And this demon had huge horns. And around his horns, there was this fire substance around his horns. And I knew that it was some type of fire. But that fire, I can't explain it in words, but that fire was like, you pretty much see how fire is on this earth. No, it was not like that. It was this, I have no idea to what to say about that. But this fire was hovering, I guess you can say, around its horns where it was not hurting that demon. So this huge demon trying to drag me in, I guess trying to take my soul into hell, I guess. At that time, I was still serving God. Two years ago, I believe, yep two years ago. So this demon, I have no idea how it was able to drag me, my soul or spirit, but it was doing it. And the me that was in the dream, I guess you can say, the whole time I continued to say, I bind and cast you out. I continued to say that like, constant and after I don't know two minutes or so the dream ended and when I woke up my whole room was thick of this evil presence like so thick like I could feel it so easily and I really don't feel anything that large or that evil hardly ever every so often maybe but it is rare anyways my point is that fire that was around his horns <laughs> was some really crazy stuff man and it makes me think if you were to go to hell that fire there is not the same here it is not the same. So obviously, if it is not the same, I would think that the fire in hell is worse. So you can't even compare the fire on earth with the fire in hell. So if you burn yourself on earth, that is nothing compared to what you are going to receive in hell. My Lord. Think about that. <clears throat> okay, 46. Where their warm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Here we go again, 47. Now, if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. So this is saying to pluck out your eye. Here we go. Let me highlight it. So, in 43, 
it is saying to cut off your hand and 45 your foot 47 now your eye so and if thine eye offend thee pluck it out it is better for thee <clears throat> To enter into the kingdom of God, heaven, with one eye, than having two eyes, to be cast into fire. So if your eye is causing you to sin, so if you are watching porn, if you are staring at girls' behinds and other things, if it is causing you to sin, literally pluck it out. Kevin, I am not going to pluck out my eye. Okay, continue to sin and go to hell then. Easy. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell. So it is better for you to damage your eye or pluck out your eye than to not do it and continue on in sin than being cast into hell for sin. Think about that, 48. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. So here we go again. It continues to speak about these worms and the fire. Let me highlight it. Okay. And 44, 46, 48, fire and warmth. Obviously, these fire or this fire and these warms are serious. This is no joke. So, your hand can make you sin. Your feet can make you sin or sin. And your eye can make you sin pretty much this is saying look do what you have to to stop sinning be extreme as you have to to stop sinning I know for myself back when I was in sin there were times where I would cry out to God meaning crying crying and yelling God please help me take away these sins from me take away the temptations I was crying hard it's not coming out of my nose tears on my knees sometimes just crying please help me if if you are not willing to get to that point, how can you truly say that you are trying to not sin? How can you say that? As you can see here, you have to get to the extreme. If you are not willing to get extreme, then how can you say that it is true that you want to stop sinning. No, you have to get extreme. You may even have to isolate yourself. You may have to. You may have to stay away from many people. You may have to fast for weeks. Do what you need to, to stop sinning. This is what, in essence, this is what it is saying, all together, do what you need to to stop sinning. Get extreme as you need to. I know for myself, in order to stay right with God, I can't be around certain people. I can't speak to certain people. I can't watch or do things like everyone else because it may influence me to go to sin or to sin. So you have to get extreme. You have to do what it takes to keep your life straight with God. 
if you are not willing to get extreme, then you are not trying. Some people say that I am really strict in everything like that. Yes, you have to be strict. You have to be extreme. We have to understand that many people are going to hell. So if many people are going to hell and they are very loose with their lives, why would you follow the same route when you know that or know where it is going to lead you? It makes no sense. Kevin, you are too strict because I want to go to heaven. Being loose is going to send me to hell. I am not with that. I want nothing of hell. I don't like any place that is too hot. I don't like any place that smells really bad. I don't like worms. I don't like being burned. <laughs> so, and I don't like demons. So obviously, that is telling me, hey, hell is not for you, Kevin. Okay, what do I have to do to not go to hell? Simple. Stay away from sin. Okay, let me find out what I have to do to stay out of sin. <laughs> Why... If you don't want to go somewhere, why are you doing things that is going to send you there? Think about that. So let me stop here. Get extreme. Stop playing around. God bless you.